Eon. We are meant to be a colony that runs independently. Meanwhile, Britain keeps shitting on us endlessly. <laughs> Tax us relentlessly. Then King George turns around and runs a spending spree. And he ain't ever gonna set his descendants free. So there will be a revolution in this century. And to me, he says in parentheses, don't be shocked when your history book mentions me. I will lay down my life if it sets us free. Eventually, you'll see my ascendancy. And I am not throwing away my... I grew up on 200th Street off Dykeman. I, my parents are from that age that they had the cast albums in between Willy Colon and Grand Combo <laughs> growing up. So it was a lot of Latin music in my house. It was a lot of cast albums like Man La Mancha and Camelot. And then also I'm like a little younger than hip hop. So, you know, my sister took me to Beat Street when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to see Disorderlies because the fat boys got, <laughs> just never a time when hip hop was part of my life. I was a little too young for Crush Group in the <laughs> theater. I saw it later when it was, you know, it was when it was on, uh, on TV all the time. Yeah, indeed. For you know, for me, it was important that the show is such a love letter to hip hop. So it was important for me to get all my heroes, get all of those people who were gonna get the Biggie references and are gonna get the Mob Deep references. You know, that's there's as many hip hop references as there are musical theater references. Because I I basically lied to myself for a few years. I just pretended I was writing an album because uh, I didn't want to worry about everyone getting everything the first time. You know, I still go back to Reasonable Doubt. I still go back to Capital Punishment. I still go back to Bizarre Ride and hear things I never heard before and I wanted to build a Broadway score that had the feel of a of one of those albums one of those hip-hop albums that's a huge priority I had the luxury of a public school education where music was next to math and science that saved my life in a very real way we know that music is is the silver bullet when it comes to math and science scores and English you know it connects both hemispheres of the brain it's you have to be good at math to be able to spit it's so important to what we do I started I wrote the first draft at Wesley and put it up it was an 80 minute one act 92 theater which you know well go west and so it was really and it wasn't for a school project it wasn't my thesis it was just something i really needed to write you know it's interesting i was 1999 2000 it was right when that first latin pop boom was happening and suddenly the people that i had listened to all my life like the rest of the country was listening to because they were singing in english like mark right. anthony and so it was just an amazing time jennifer lopez uh, don't be fooled by the rocks that she got and and what was amazing was sort of seeing the rest of the world embrace what i I'd always grown up but had listened to at home and so it was also my attempt to like bring the culture I'd grown up with onto into my writing for the first time. I have like a warranty after a year my voice will give out my back will give out so I gave myself a year to do it and really proud of that year and that original cast but I just knew that I you know I want to write the next thing you know I had the idea for Hamilton on my first vacation from Heights. So I, that teaches me is the good ideas don't come when you got 50 things to do. Mm -hmm. The good ideas come when you like in your dog <laughs> or like you actually get a breath and you get a second to daydream. So I knew I would need that if I was gonna write the next one. I was working on In the Heights. That's where I met Chris right. uh, when he auditioned for Benny in 2002. And we would freestyle for fun. And Anthony would come in and distract us for doing. He'd be like, let's rap about our day. And then he was the one who sort of pushed us to do it in front of people. And it's our longest running relationship. We've toured Edinburgh and Melbourne. And then the fact that we've been doing this for 15 years to move five blocks from 40th Street to 45th Street is kind of incredible. And, and we also have something called the Freestyle Academy, which is we've been sort of teaching the wor like workshops on the things we do. So so one of our newest members, Anissa Folds, was in the workshop and she was just so amazing that she's making her Broadway debut with us. And so we've just been looking for other people. It's like, you know, Professor X. We've been looking for other people with right. superpower. We've just been growing, growing. So we rotate every night in terms of who's going to be on stage. And you'll get an amazing show every night because you're there and it's going to be your day and it's going to be your suggestions and it's wild. Yes, I'm playing Hamilton in January in it's, Puerto Rico. It's a third national tour that we're basically inaugurating and debuting there, except that all of the funds will go to artists and arts organizations struggling to recover from Hurricane Maria. I was scared when I saw it with the Duke and Duchess because Megan knew the lyrics slightly better than I did. I was trying to mouth along and I couldn't get it all, but I've been studying. I think I can do it now. I think I'm... The first, Hamilton's first big song in the show is called My Shot, and it is the biggest sort of meal in terms of lyrics. And if you can get through that, you've got the show. You can, it's sort of like the way Hamlet's like six major monologues. It's like, if you can get My Shot, you've got it.